Welcome to New Realities. This is Alan Steinfeld, and this program is about the evolution of our consciousness and how we, as a civilization, are moving into more an understanding of ourselves as energy, as consciousness, as non-physical reality, what my guests might call fifth-dimensional being. Tonight I'll be talking to Zarathustra. He's developed a new form of appealing and I would say evolution um, which takes us to higher parts of ourselves so welcome Zarathustra to the program well thank you very much I'd like to thank you uh, Alan for inviting me and also your great audience at this time of the night listening to this program I'd like to thank him as well well I saw some videos of what you do on YouTube and I think it's it's very interesting uh, in the sense that you are activating people energetically and stuff is happening to them. They're falling down, they're shaking, they're crying, they're screaming. Um, can you Do you know what you're doing or is it just kind of an intuitive thing? Can you talk about that? Um, I, I, yes, I, um, when I'm completely in the zone, some sort of intelligence, beyond the human mind takes over. We can call it the divine being or the unified field of uh, intelligence or the spirit. Uh, we can give it different names, but that which takes over knows what it's doing. Right. It's, as it's far over. as uh, what happens to people is when the energies build up in a group setting, and I do touch their third eye, there's a big jolt of uh, energy wave that hits the pineal gland. And, and, and pineal gland is bioluminescent. It does get activated by light waves. So when is a strong current of light wave hits pineal gland, it starts producing DMT. And uh, that's one of the reasons that they, they get soft or uh, they shake. Uh, uh -huh. And sometimes they fall down and we have to catch them. Because why? Uh, what, was, uh, what, what what is happening to make them fall down? I mean, what their their pitch their pineal glands being activated? So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. The pineal okay. gland uh, starts producing a large amount of DMT, and right. that causes the person to get shaky because of the production of DMT in pineal gland in that uh, that large amount. Because DMT can also create visions or hallucinations or, you know, levels of seeing levels of reality. Does that happen in your sessions too? Absolutely. A lot of people, uh, they go into these light worlds, purple or pink or uh, violet. And, uh, and some people journeying into these crystal worlds, uh, it's the reaction uh, different people have di uh, different reaction, but most of them do go into these light worlds and crystal worlds or dreamy places and have encounters with trans-dimensional beings. Wow, that's pretty amazing. And you told me, though, this kind of thing is just beginning to happen to you. You're really in your early stages and... Um, do you want to tell that story again about the unfoldment, if you care to, about uh, of this gift, uh, like how that all, some of it? I mean, yes. anyway. Yes, I'll, I'll be I'll be delighted. Uh, the part I'm not clear if you want me to begin with is from my starting spiritual journey to the awakening, or how the birth of the fifth dimensional quantum healing. So, yeah, why, um, why, why don't you start there? I mean, you were on a spiritual path. You saw lots of teachers. And then, yeah, go into, the, like, the birth of that. Of, of, I think you said some beings came to you, like that, that birth of that fifth-dimensional healing. Yes, yes I, I, I was a spiritual uh, a seeker seeking for freedom. And I also realized that I had... Um, uh, I was a channel for healing energy. I was a healer. I noticed that in, in early time uh, of my seeking. And uh, 
and this is around 1989, 1990, and I had a couple encounters with two very powerful healers. And uh, but originally the the goal was freedom of coming to this place within myself, which is quiet, and uh, and I'm not subject to emotions of going up and down every day. I wanted to be free. And uh, however, as I got closer to this a uh, non-dual place within myself, as I more started to recognize uh, this place within. Uh, the self, which is very still and very silent, and it's non-moving, and it's not subject to feeling good or feeling bad, ups and downs, emotions. It's not subject to any of these things, and it's perfectly still, and it's always there. Some call it the seeker. Some call it the observer. As I started to recognize this place within myself more and more, um, uh my energy started to build up, and the the uh, energy field started to kind of grow around around me, and I was feeling more energy in my 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 hands. Uh, around 2009, this is from maybe April, March, April to June of 2009. I I began to hear uh, voices uh, very clearly in a lower tone, and the voices began to identify themselves as a part of my higher self, uh, as my guides, my fifth dimensional guides and masters and teachers. And uh, and in the beginning, it was kind of funny because I was never really into channeling in that way or I, ne- I was never attracted to this kind of thing. Uh, it, to me, it was very new age. But when I do hear these voices in my head, they're undeniable. And they're Mm -hmm. identifying themselves to me as my fifth dimensional guide. And as we go on throughout the course of a week or 10 days, then they're instructing me to go uh, make a a business card uh, and write down healer, the word healer on it. And, uh, well, I was a semi-healer for a number of years, but the healing energy wasn't going through my hands and my body at all times. Uh, when I went to Asia, I went to India or Philippines or Iran or uh, those countries, the healer would come out, and I would have the, the energy. I had the power. I could feel it. But whenever I came back to the U.S., the healer would disappear. Uh, consequently, since I had a different life, I did not talk about it and didn't publicize this. Only a few close friends were aware that I had these abilities, but I wouldn't talk about it or practice it. Uh, in 2009, when I got, uh, and this event of 2009, you have to also keep in mind that I was six months in Brazil. And I stayed six months in this village called Abajania, where John of God resides. So I right. stayed so there for six. Did that was that a big was that a big part of your activation? Being with the energies of John of God, did you feel? I, yeah, yeah. I, I think Alan, it had because it was the six months that I ended up in Brazil, and I went for self healing, and I wanted to be somewhere quiet. And this place is very, very powerful and has a lot of shakti and energy running through this place. And uh, definitely going into the current rooms, energy rooms that they were, John of God was doing healing and being there for six months in that energy field, I believe uh, that it, it did trigger something very strongly. And uh, uh, the, I, I left... I, I left Abu Jania in, in uh, July, August of 2008, and I um, mo- went to Los Angeles. But by um, almost nine months, ten months after that that date, uh, I, uh, or about, uh, I'm sorry, I left in 2007. About a year and a half after that uh, departure of Brazil, I get activated in Los Angeles, and I hear these voices talking to me. And um, it was a bit confusing in the beginning, but then they tell me to make a business card. So I make a business uh, I'm just wondering, what am I going to write on it? And they say, write healer. And then they say, quantum healer. I say, oh, that sounds pretty cool. 
then they say fifth dimensional quantum healer, quantum healing. And that was when I was like, wait a minute, uh, w- excuse me, what the hell is fifth dimensional quantum healing? I don't mm-hmm. even know what that means, let alone to go make a business card and give it to people and, and tell them I'm doing this. Uh, there's no way I do this. I make a fool out of myself. And then they tell me, go ahead and research it. So I go on the Internet and start researching it. And uh, the feeling gets stronger and stronger. The voices are getting more clear. And during this period of time, I also had a couple of very powerful encounters. And one of these encounters was that I, uh, I, had, I was a bit confused as which direction in life I should go. Uh, my old world was collapsing and nothing was happening anymore. And, and the new world, which was doing this healing work, was opening up, and it was very confusing and frightening in this period of time of thinking, how am I going to make a living? Who's going to pay my bills? Um, How am I going to announce this? The fear of announcing that I am fifth-dimensional quantum healer out of nowhere was great, and there were a lot of doubts. And I go, I happen to be in Sedona. I happen to run into a friend who turned me on to a powerful uh, uh, channeler who worked with, uh, she apparently connects with somebody that, uh, a dead person, someone close to you who's who's dead. And who was was that? Who was the channeler? Who was that? The the name of the channeler? Yeah, just curious. Her name is Tara. And... uh, Okay. I, I, uh, she lived in Sedona at that time, and she was quite famous. I had, I, I don't, I didn't know her, and I had not heard from her, but, uh, and I, I, I've only seen her one time, but, uh, she was wonderful because, uh, through this, all of a sudden, my sister shows up who had died about eight years ago, and, uh, she's, all the indica- indications that uh, the channeler Tara is giving me is very, very exact. So there was, uh, I, I was convinced this is the spirit of my sister talking to me. And uh, she's instructing me that I am afraid and I'm a coward and I need, uh, I'm not coming to the open. I should come out to the open and announce that I'm a healer and I do have the power or the energy comes through me and, and I'm just frightened. And mm-hmm. uh, so consequently, after a couple of other things happened in this period of time, from April to June, uh, I uh, was convinced that I need to do some, I need to do this. Mm-hmm. And throughout this time, uh, the other experience that happens to me is that uh, all of a sudden, the entities that are talking to me about fifth dimensional quantum healing, uh, they uh, kind of appear to be like the same entities that they would possess John of God. It had the same quality of feeling of them being present and uh, com- in comparison to when I was in Abhijania. So oh. there are a lot of indications and similarities and uh, coincidences, if we would call it, or synchronicities happening all in the same time. Did you feel and, like uh, you were sort of, um, things were happening to you physically also, besides these interesting um, um, people you've been running into? Did you, did you feel stuff like in your brain opening, in your mind, in your body, you know, awakening? Uh, what, what happened, I was feeling ex- extreme amount of energy running, a strong current of energy running through my hands. And uh, what happened is uh, uh, all of a sudden I was completely knocked knocked out. Uh, I was very, very weak. I could not get up to go to the kitchen or go to the bathroom. I had a hard time doing that. I uh, had to lie down on, a, on my bed for three weeks. Uh, I couldn't fully fall asleep, but I wasn't completely awake. And I could just see, as I had my eyes closed, I could feel like there was information being downloaded in my psyche. 
And uh, it very much reminded me of that part of the movie Matrix, where Neo uh, was looking at these the bad guys, and the bad guys, they turn into these energy patterns. And that's how it felt like information in the form of energy, a pattern was being downloaded. Mm. And that took three weeks. And uh, after that three weeks, my, my life came back to normal. But what happened was they download. They were. They told me that we're downloading, and um, uh, we're turning our right hand into a high frequency transmitter. So you can do psychic surgery and transmit information in cellular level to people you touch, and mm. that's how you can change their blueprints and ch- change their pattern of way of thinking from inside out by changing the cellular memory of the person, whether it's a healing work, physical level, emotional, or spiritual. It, and that's it, what happened. The, so is this happening because, you, I mean, it seems like you're an agent for this planetary change and we're here to upgrade our, our, our physical DNA structure, the ascension, whatever you want to call it. Are you just one of many who are doing this or are you one of the few? Well, I, uh, I, I see there's know. a lot of light workers on this planet in different ways and forms appearing and doing their job. And I find myself, uh, being one of the many. And, right. uh, right. So, so what so, if, I mean, just, I mean, just what I'm interesting, what, like, if you, maybe you don't know, but what is the, what's the big picture here? You're activating these people, but, uh, What's what do you, do you get a vision of what it's all about or what it's all for? You know what I mean? Yes, yes. Um, the truth, the truth of it is, what is what has become very clear to me and shown to me is that all is very well and everything is perfectly the way it is, and nothing needs to be changed. Everything is is absolutely 100% under control and it's unfolding the way it needs to do, to be. Uh, however, some of us on this path, when we do come across other beings that they're ready and that means they're vibrating in the same certain frequency, um, then, it, then it's, it's our job to transmit the truth to them. And the truth is that Within every single being, every human being, there is a place within themselves which is timeless. And it's, it's like a column of presence and awareness, which is always here. And it hasn't been born or it won't die. It's just pure presence. And it doesn't have an identity. It just is. And once we, our attention goes towards this place within ourselves, which also I need to add that this is not a place that we gain. Therefore, we, we cannot lose it. It's not something we have to work on to gain it or develop it. It's a place that is already present. So we cannot lose it. The only thing that happens is that either through the grace of the guru or the master or the healer or shaman or anything happens in life, if something happens, for whatever reason, our attention turns around and goes towards this place within ourselves. And once we start noticing this place, we realize that we are an eternal present, presence being that is always here and is able to see change. It can observe change, but it's not unaffected by change itself. It does come in a way of having a body and a character, and now you can see the body is growing old and the character is becoming wise, hopefully, and at one point it dies. But the real being does not move. It's always here. So right, but that, once that's, we... Yeah, I'm like, okay, go ahead. Yeah, finish, go ahead. tell me. Yeah, no. so once, uh, once we come to, un- to this understanding, finding this place inside our own self, we start to see it's in the fabric of every other being. And start, then we start seeing that actually it's a duplication of one being 
which is we can call it God, and it's in everything and everywhere. And right. by that realization, the mind becomes very quiet. And as the mind becomes more quiet, you raise your vibrations to much higher frequencies. Mm -hmm. The more but, we identify to this silent place within, the more we raise our vibrations. The more we raise our vibrations, the more our reality starts to change. We find ourselves in a similar planet Earth to this one with all of our friends and everything, yet you're not affected by the troubles by the diseases, by the things that average human being is concerned. Because mm -hmm. you're not vibrating in that frequency. Yet you can see them, but they cannot see you. Right. The, 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 cannot, I mean, what you're saying yes. is like the eternal spiritual truths that we are this eternal being. I mean, that's always been true. People have always known that. But it seems like something else is also happening at this time in our history it's it's like boiling water you know first there's a few bubbles and then there's a, a few more and then suddenly the whole pot is boiling over and something like that seems to be happening do you get that sense yes absolutely that because there are these relative realities simultaneously are happening in in this realization of the silent and still place within, we also start to see that there's multidimensional aspects of our own self simultaneously living billions of different lives mm -hmm. and of other people too. So something, absolutely something is happening. It appears that something is happening. But once you find this place within yourself, you realize nothing has ever happened. Right, but that is a new revelation for for the, the the general population and it seems like you're more and more people i mean we're changing civilization in in that sense you know the the mass yes. culture it, 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 it certainly it certainly alan appears to, to be happening yeah it it is and i think that um it's like you said it's just the beginning for you i think there's um untold possibilities that lie ahead for for who we are collectively because of these types of activations. Yes. The, so, the fifth dimensional quantum healing, healing uh, and awareness, fifth dimensional quantum awareness, is about that we identify with the still point within ourselves through silence. And through that, we change. We make changes in wherever we are, not from the outside. We, change, we take a quantum leap. There is no need to try to change anything in the outside world. We change something within ourselves. And then the outside world changes accordingly. And that's the fifth dimensional quantum awareness. So has your life, I mean, you're doing all this amazing work, you're traveling around the world, you're activating people there, but uh, uh, has your life, I mean, what was the, so if you can progress with your story a little bit, I, I just wanted to clarify some points, but yeah, so as you start to gain this power, you got, you were directed on how to use this power, I assume, right? And yeah, well, I would have to say it's the other way kind of around, it's the power okay. is taken over. Mm -hmm. And and it the and it becomes more apparent and more apparent that um, I don't really have a choice, mm -hmm. rather than just surrendering to it and let it do whatever it wants to do. But it it its intelligence is much more beyond what I can imagine. So I I'm forced to su surrender to it and let it do its thing. But you have a regular life as well, don't you? You live sort of as a normal person, or is this power, like, always happening for you? No, of course. No, I do. Of course I have a normal life, and I get sick, and I get a toothache, and I, all, all of everything that happens to anybody else. Right. But but can't this power also be used to elevate your ordinary life, in a sense? Because we... I mean, when we start to live as fifth dimensional beings, uh, something else starts to happen for us, right? 
Yeah, absolutely. That that that's a nonstop thing because that state of personal evolution is continuously happen. Mm-hmm. And and it does affect my normal life because my point of view to things are different. Like I don't panic uh easily or I don't react so, e- so easily to unpleasant things in my life. And uh there's a deep sense of trust that all is well and everything is taken care of. But, you know, I can still get scared or or uh, have to defend myself or if I fall down, something will break or be caught. Uh, and I have to suffer the pain. Uh, but definitely it affects and your awareness is much more heightened and you become a lot more sensitive to everything. Because you... You realize you are in everything. Therefore, you have a hard time sometimes separating yourself from everything. And then you have the stillness that you've activated inside you, right? Is that what you were saying? Yeah, this, the, yeah, the stillness was something w- that was recognized. I recognize that this is always here. And, uh, and that's one of my goals and one of my passions is to transmit that to other people that are open to me. I, I don't walk around and preach it, but if someone's open to me, then uh, I, I, I'm very happy to transmit it to them. Whether I do touch them on their third eye or touch them somewhere on their body or, or by just sitting with them in silence. Can, can you do it on the radio, this transmission, or do you have to be in the physical presence with them? No, I, I can do it from anywhere at any time. I can do it right now. Could you do I, it now? I'm going to prepare myself. And, uh, okay. But, <laughs> but I mean, so, I'm laying down, but anyway. <laughs> All right. Are, are, are you lying down, did you say I that? am lying down. Should I stand up? Okay. Or, or I'll lie down. So, I'll wh- lie down. Okay, so when you're ready, let me know. And, but also everyone listening, and I think that we probably have a bunch of people listening, uh, this will be directed towards them as well? Sure, absolutely. Anyone oh. who's open to it, they can just follow these instructions. Okay, so good. So either you, either you uh, stand up and close your eyes, or you sit in a comfortable situa- uh, position, or lie down. If you can put your hands on your heart, that would be great. If not, maybe one of them on your heart. If not, that's fine. And you just simply bring your attention on your third eye. And and breathe in. Imagine you're breathing in from your third eye uh, instead of breathing in through your nose. So it's just an imagination. And we just gently breathe in and out. Mm-hmm. So this breathing is happening from the third eye. And now we can just turn this breathing into a violet light that we're breathing breathing it in from our third eye. And as we're breathing it in, it hits the center point in our brain, which is the pineal gland. Now, when you breathe in, the light comes, hits the pineal gland, and as you breathe out, instead of it going back the same direction, now it's going upwards, and it goes and hits the top of the skull, but it doesn't go outside of the head, and it falls down from every side of the skull falls down, and cools off the brain. So with the first breath, we're breathing in, and the air goes in through a tunnel and hits the pineal gland in the center of the brain. And then we breathe it in, and then when we breathe out, the air goes up horizontally, and it hits the... uh, the, the air goes vertically and it hits the top of the skull and it falls down and cools off the brain. So we're going to do this in silence. 
mm-hmm. for a few moments. It's a visualization. You're visualizing that with every breath you take, the air goes in, and then with your breathing out, the air goes upward and hits the skull and falls down and cools off your brain. So we start. So, did you feel anything, Alan? Yeah, as you made those sounds, I felt waves come through my body, sort of, I I, I reacted. Yeah, I I, I felt something. Right. I, yeah. Right. A, a very, a very just subtle tingling and sensation. Yeah, something in my chest, sort of opening up and... Um, right. So, that yeah. was pretty quick, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, it, I don't know what was going on, if it was my visualization, but something in those sounds, what were those sounds you were making? These are this, the, some ancient sounds that also been given to me as far as um, not given to me specifically, it's available to everyone, but uh, they came to me intuitively when I got activated, which has uh, healing uh, properties as far as uh, see, what's going to happen in, in, in the coming future is we're going to use laser and sound vibration in correcting things like surgery or using a kidney stone or, or also uh, putting bones back together or cutting through tissue. Nothing's going to be through a knife anymore in the future technology. It's all going to be through sound and wave vibration, sound vibration, and light. Mm-hmm. So these are some sound vibrations that when I send them out, such as... <laughs> so anyway, they do trigger and they awaken certain parts of the cellular, uh, of the DNA and rewriting the cellular memory. And whatever they rewrite and awaken is the program to awaken us to who we really are. Right. I get that. So each right. different sound did something. Each sound did just something different. They're, they're, it's, they're specific in their direction, right? Yes. It's totally random. And when, when I turn into the channel of the fifth dimensional quantum healing, then that that intelligence does whatever sound it wants to create and knows that what triggers what in, in whom. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So yeah, I, totally, I liked it. I, I so actually it, feel a little clearer, a little more well-rested, I have to say. Little, things look a little sharper. I, mean, yes. I don't know, I don't yes, know if that's me creating it or something really did shift, but... Well, yeah, well, yeah, I mean, um, uh, who knows, but right. it, it, but all of, it appears, yeah, it all, it all appears that it works, and it's mm-hmm. affecting something, mm-hmm. so, but it's just the fact that you felt something, whether you think you created it or it just happened, mm-hmm. uh, in such a short period of time, it's an indication that, uh, it works. Yeah. So your job is now to travel around the world and activate people, huh? Well, yes. It it, it appears to be that way. <laughs> yeah. It looks like that's my job now. <laughs> I mean, that's and, a good job. And uh, yeah. Well, yeah. You know, I don't. To be honest with you, I don't perceive myself as I am a savior or I'm, my job is to liberate people. Um, I'm not even identified to that, that this, this is, 
what I have to do. But this appears to be what is going on in my life. I don't have a choice not to do it. And and I don't I get so much joy out of it. And, uh, and people and benefit the, from it. I've seen. I mean, I've heard people that get. I mean, I, my friend Liz in Sedona had a great transformation. It seems like. I mean, she seems different in some ways, and I've noticed that. So, I mean, it's having positive effects on people. Yes, I'm. I'm just grateful for for to to the source, to the spirits, for just giving me this opportunity to be able to be a vehicle to transform so many lives and see so much joy in their people's eyes or smiles or or when people come to a workshop of mine and then their life change forever, uh, you know, not everybody, but the ones who do, it just gives me so much joy that I was able to touch someone's life permanently. Um, uh, and the interesting thing is that when we're in, in, in groups, the energy is so much stronger, and it's so profound. Uh, and the, the periods of time that the silence takes over, and I don't have to say anything or do anything, but it just takes over. Well, um, what, what happens but, in the workshops? How, how I mean, it's not just uh, the meditation. What else goes on? What other kind of things can people expect I, in your workshops? I offer different kind. Of, I, I offer uh, three uh, um, different workshops at this point, or I would have to say four. Uh, and one of them is my signature workshop, which is the third eye activation, which all the meditations, active meditations, and everything is towards uh, activating the pineal gland. And I do educate my people what is pineal gland, what is its relationship to third eye or sixth chakra, and uh, how it gets activated, what are the benefits of it, and uh, everything that they need to do, and we work in that direction. Uh, also, I realize that in order to also activate your pineal gland, uh, you have to love yourself. And mm -hmm. self-love and self-acceptance is very, very important in raising our vibrations to a higher frequency. So I what? do incorporate uh, self-love affirmations in my third eye activation workshop. But the pineal gland in particular, is that, that is the doorway to uh, uh, kind of fifth and higher levels of dimensional awareness. Is that the reason for its activation? Uh, absolutely. The pineal gland is, is the gateway between the physical realm and spiritual realm. And, and, and but, no, but and then, so tell tell me a little more about the yeah the pineal gland. By by well the pineal gland, um, since it does produce DMT dimethyltryptamine, um, and it does produce a large amount of DMT at birth and a large amount of DMT at death. That's why a lot of people go into these blissful states when they're dying or they go through the tunnel uh, and have these different experiences and encounters with trans-dimensional beings and spiritual beings. But in addition to that, when pineal gland becomes activated and through the production of dimethyltryptamine, which is DMT, its main thing is that it takes the illusion of duality away. Mm. It, it makes it very clear that we're very interconnected. We're, it's our own selves, that we're one with everything, and it's not just a theory. We start experiencing that oneness, that it is my own self mm. everywhere. And that's its main thing, taking the illusion of duality away. And we, but the, yeah, the, the 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 other benefits that come with it, which is as as a result of that realization, is also it the person as they start realizing that they're one with everything. Obviously, then they can become a much better psychic because if you're one with everything, then you can you can know everything. So the psychic power is enhanced through this oneness, which if you're a clairvoyant, you become a much more powerful clairvoyant. 
uh, clairaudient, clairsentient, claircognient. All of your psychic abilities enhance drastically. If you're a channeler, you're a much bigger channel and cleaner, clear channel now because you're experiencing your one with everything. Therefore, you get out of the way and you become a pure channel. If you're a psychic, if you're a healer, again, you're all, this is all channeling. So those are, there's a number, if you, I've had people come to me that they're singers in Los Angeles and somehow they couldn't sing. Something happened to them, they lost their voice. And I work on them once or twice and they started singing again. I had people who were writers or had someone came to me, he could never cook. He had no cooking abilities or talent. And after a few uh, workshops or sessions, uh, he turned to this really amazing chef. I still, when I go to Rodondo Beach, he invites me over for dinner. Okay. And uh, so many different things happen in artistic and psychic ability. Okay. Uh, in addition to that, we have a, we're, it, it's believed that we have a large amount of calcite microcrystals, the same components that we have in our inner ear, as well as cell phone technology has been copied from it that is a transmitter and receiver. So we have a complete cell phone in our pineal gland that by activating it in a higher level, we can communicate with other beings from anywhere in the world through our, our telepathic ability. And that's so activated with your work, that kind of inner awareness. Yes. When, yes. When I, do, when I do the third eye activation workshop, or an individual uh, person, when I start working on their pineal gland and getting their pineal gland activated, they, uh, th their lives change. And of course, person to person change, that is different. Some people are more available to this and ready and some aren't. But I've never worked with anybody in the past three years that I put my finger on their third eye and they did not feel anything. Right. You know, maybe the feeling was short uh, and went away. Uh, it was, uh, but every single person I've worked with, they felt something happened, whether it was profound or not, but something changed. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is because pineal gland, as I mentioned, it's bioluminescent. It, it mm -hmm. gets activated through light. Well, and, that uh, yeah, can you teach people to do that as well, or because you've got a sort of transmission going, it's pretty much coming from you. But but yeah, I think you. I think my friend Liz said you did were teaching some of that, weren't you? No, I have not teach fifth dimensional quantum healing to anybody yet. Uh -huh. Um. Uh, a part of it is I I feel I'm not ready for it. And also, uh, somehow it doesn't feel right 100%. But I certainly can show people and teach people, those who are interested and they're dedicated, uh, when the, the, the key to it is you have to tap into your inner silence through, through uh, inner stillness, through inner silence. Uh -huh. That's the key to this. That's the component. Unless the person can go beyond their mind and come into this still and silent place within themselves, they're not able to uh, raise their vibrations to higher frequencies. And this is basically what I do. I ra I'm able to raise my own vibrations or vibrating from a much higher frequency, and therefore I can transmit that information. Other people can't. But they have to go through this uh, period of training with me or wherever on, on their own or Vipassana meditation or other masters or teachers. But they have to find their inner silence first, mm -hmm. an inner still point. That's the key to it. 